we go. Uh, why would I do that? <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning for all of you who are here in person and all of you joining on Facebook. We are so glad you have joined us on this absolutely beautiful March morning. A few announcements today. Uh, tomorrow, um, we're going to get together our men's and women's groups, um, but it's open to everyone, even if you've never attended in, um, before. So tomorrow, men's Bible study will be meeting here in the social hall at 9.30. Also, if you would need a Zoom link for that, because we will do both for the men's group, please speak to Pastor Dave. Women's Bible study will be this Thursday at 10 o'clock, um, and that will be all in person, and you're all welcome for that. We are um, again going to have lilies and flowers for Easter. There are forms in back on the table if you would like to give um, a lily or flower in memory of a loved one. So please fill those out and get those to the church office. Along with that, for Easter, we are planning to have three services, um, but we'll need to know how many are at each service. So please register by emailing or calling the church for the service you would like to attend on Easter. That way we'll know if we need to add any additional services, which would be fantastic if we need to. So on Tuesday, we are going to be lining faith chests. We have a lot of baptisms coming up and we have the faith chests, uh, but we need to get them all lined. So we're going to be meeting here in the social hall at one o'clock on Tuesday. 
if you would like to help line faith chests. It's cutting felt and gluing it into the faith chests. Uh, there, one other announcement I do want to, we are going to have on Easter Sunday a way to greet one another for all the people we've been missing this year since we're not all gathering together. And so we're putting together a slideshow with just pictures of people in our congregation as a way to say hi to everybody. So please email or uh, send a picture to church for this, uh, to the church office, or else you can just stop after worship and I'll snap a picture of you or Dave will on our phone just as a way to greet all of the people in our congregation on Easter morning. Uh, you can see the grab and go for all of the other announcements and events that are going on. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for all of those listed in our bulletin. We also pray for the family of Kelly Curry. Kelly's funeral was here at Our Savior's yesterday afternoon. Those are the announcements that I have, and so we will begin worship now with our call to confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. We take a moment for reflection. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we thank Megan Haitala for our special music today.
Our first reading today is from 1 Timothy chapter 6. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 146. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help whose hope is the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you own, and give the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he said this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, How hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astonished and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but for God, but not for God, for God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I spent a good chunk of time this morning looking for something around church, but I again, I have another cute prop. Come on, bud. Yeah. Ah, What's up, dude? So, Theo. What sound does a bear make? What sound does a bear make? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And then cuddles with his dad. What sound does a chicken make? Yeah, okay, you're just going to keep cuddling. What sound does a pig make? Oink, oink. What other sound does a pig make? Does a pig go... Yeah? (laughs) Yeah, that's silly. So, I wanted to talk about piggy banks, and I didn't have a piggy bank that I could find, but, you know, he'll do. Uh, We do have a piggy bank for Theo at home, but I want to get him one of the uh, ones from Thrivent. uh, It has three compartments, uh, because it's helping kids to understand that Sometimes we want to spend money on ourselves, right? Theo always wants random things, don't you? But you play with a box more anyway, don't you? Yes, you do. So it has a compartment for spending money, and it has a compartment for saving money, and it also has a compartment for giving money away, being generous with what God has given us, right? Yeah? Are we learning to be generous? Mommy. Yeah, he wants his mommy. Fair enough. See, Jesus does talk quite a bit about money. And today he talks about it in a really negative way. It sounds kind of scary the way he talks about it. We have to give things away. But that can be a really joyful thing. So I want us to think about how we can be generous with what God has given us. Yeah, you want to go find mommy? Should we say a prayer? Okay, can you, go, can you fold your hands? No, he cannot. Let's pray. 
Repeat after me. Perfect. Holy God, thank you for what you've given us. Help us to share it with the people around. And all God's children said, Amen. Okay, go find mommy. Yeah. (laughs) May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How many of you have ever used uh, Facebook Marketplace? Anybody? Just me and Alyssa? Anybody used uh, Craigslist? Or what else? Like there, there are a ton of online sellers. How about, I think this will get some people. Have any of you ever used Amazon? Yeah? I feel like a lot of people have used Amazon. I love these, these sites because I like shopping for good deals. I like finding good things. And Facebook Marketplace has been awesome because I got into woodworking a while ago and Facebook Marketplace is where I got my table saw, my drill press, my band saw, my lathe. It's where I got basically all of my woodworking stuff. It's been super nice to have. And actually, I started selling some of my stuff on Facebook Marketplace too. It's been great because some people just want to get rid of something and I can use it. The only issue is sometimes I'll find myself just sitting on the couch and I'll open up Facebook and I might check and see what my friends are doing, but more often than not, I go to Facebook Marketplace and I look through, just kind of scrolling, not looking for anything in particular. Or I'll go on Amazon with one thing that I need, and by the end of my shopping spree, I have a cart full of stuff. I've been looking at random things for hours on end. I like to find a good deal. And that's why I think I felt so convicted by this week's reading. It's a pretty intense one, right? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into heaven. Sell all that you have, give it to the poor, come and follow me. That sounds really intense. And as I read those words, as I wondered about them, I kept thinking, what does it mean for me? Is Jesus telling me to sell my house? Is Jesus saying that I shouldn't own a car? I should sell it and give the money to the poor? I don't know. It's something I have been struggling with all week. What what does it mean to sell all you have? The thing that really caught me, though, was how Jesus talked to this man. He asked him a question, and before he gave this impossible command, he looked at him, and he loved him. Looked at him, and he loved him. I think Jesus was trying to teach him something, and is still trying to teach us something today. We have a long history in the Christian faith of people who literally sold what they had, everything they had. St. Francis of Assisi was extremely rich. He had all of the money that you could dream of. And he gave away everything, his inheritance, he gave away everything and started the Franciscan order of monks. Martin Luther, he was the heir to a coal mining uh, company. He had his, or he was getting his law degree. He, he was going to be set for life. But he sold everything and became a monk. 
So what does it look like for us? Are we all supposed to just sell everything we have? I don't know about you, but that makes me really nervous, right? I like my house. I like my terrible table saw. I like the things I have. Maybe that's part of the lesson, though. As we've been talking about, like, the COVID stimulus money that's coming, Alyssa and I started talking about what we should do with it. We both still have our jobs. We're not in a difficult spot right now. So we thought, let's take some of it. We'll save it. We'll take some of it and we'll put it in a college fund for Theo. And then we can give some of that away. There's numerous charities who are doing wonderful works. We can help people directly with that money. But in the Bible, whenever they talk about offerings, they talk about first fruits. That doesn't mean that we find what we need, what we want first, and then we give. It means giving out of the abundance that we have. I need a perspective shift. See, money is a tool. It's something that is powerful. It, it has a lot of power. It, it can give a lot of power. But it can also become too powerful for us. I keep wondering how often money has become my God. How often seeking a good deal has become my golden calf. Maybe that's what Jesus was pointing at. In the story, we don't get this young man's name. He's just described as the rich man or the rich young ruler. His identity is based on how much money he has. And I wonder how often we're guilty of that too. How often we define ourselves or others by how much we have. How, how abundant we are or how little we have. I think money in a lot of ways has become an idol for me. It's become a God of its own kind. And I think Jesus is calling me out in this passage. So I keep coming back to this question, what, what's this supposed to look like? How do I respond to the words of Jesus today? I don't know yet. Because I think this is something I need to struggle with. This isn't something I find the answer to today and the rest of my life is smooth sailing. This is something I wonder about each and every day. Am I using money as a tool? Or am I being used by the money that I have? Is my perspective correct? Am I doing what I can to help others? Am I giving of myself? I think that has to be the question I ask every day. Because that's what we're called to do as Christians. Christ, the Prince of Heaven, came down from his throne, gave that up to live the life of a pauper, to die on a cross and then asks us to follow him. So I have to wonder what I'm willing to give to. And I think that's what we all have to struggle with. Usually in my sermons, this is right about when there's kind of a turn. There's a turn towards grace and peace and comfort. 
But I think I'm going to take a page out of Jesus' book. He leaves this man to wonder. He leaves this man to ponder what his life should be how he should live his life, what he needs to do for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the people around him. And I think I need to sit with that discomfort today. I don't think that I can find an answer. I need to keep searching. I need to keep working at this because I need to keep learning. And I think we all need to sit with that discomfort to wonder where God is calling us to serve. Yeah, sometimes it's with money, but sometimes it's with our time, with our talents. Calling people to make sure that they're doing all right in this difficult time. Teaching Sunday school when we come back for that, or confirmation, or uh, helping lead Bible studies, or holding doors for people. It's It's literally everything. That's the big part of this. We always focus on the money. But we've been blessed with more than money. We've been blessed with time and talent and opportunities. So this week, I think we need to sit with the discomfort of what are we going to do to serve God? How are we going to use what God has given us for the betterment of the world, for the betterment of the people around us, for the betterment of the kingdom of God? How are we going to build the kingdom of God today with our time, our talents, whatever we have? How are we going to build the kingdom of God right here among us? Amen. Please stand as we continue with the confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God. We pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Strengthen the faith of your church that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Make us a servant church that continues to follow where your commandments lead, loving you above all and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Work through us and give us the gift of wisdom that helps us to build communities where all are safe and valued. Lord, in your mercy, Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering, especially Russ, Dixie, Marge, Artis, Marilyn, Sharon, Joyce, Lyndon, Dave, 
Brad, Tom, Keith, Sharon, Rod, Dave, Khan, Linda, Tom, Paul, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Comfort all those who grieve, especially the family of Kelly Curry. Lord, in your mercy, you call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation, the people of our saviors and our leaders, so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Help this congregation to live out our callings with great expectation, knowing that all things are possible with you. Lord, in your mercy, we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. So let us share a wave or a peace with our friends and neighbors here at church this morning. Yeah, wave to our Facebook friends. Our offering plates are at the back of the worship area. So let us pray together, giving thanks to God for the many gifts he has given us as we give back to God. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Now the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We'll join in our words of institution by, sing by singing, Remember Me. You 
shed your blood. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For those who are joining online or on TV later, hear these words. This is the body of Christ broken for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now, receive this blessing. Holy God will feed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to join in our benediction. May I think the thoughts of God. May I speak the good news of God. May I know the love of God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.